I said, didn't I? That if you went ahead with the exhibition, I would shit on it. You heard it, but couldn't believe what you heard, or that I would really, that I would really do it. Thank God for everybody concerned that the threat could not be partially realized. Our bodies don't always do what we want them to do. I don't suppose you can remember what you registered of my argument that day. Well, let me repeat it. Basically, Pia, I do respect the intention of your manifesto and exhibition. I respect your commitment to art and the life of the intellect. I rightly feel that something vital is missing from our cultural life and something should be done about it. Respect, did I say? But there's always a but to my yes, Pia. Well, not always, but often, especially when it comes to matters of ideas. The proof of my respect is that I actually read your manifesto. Really read it. With a red pencil in my hand. It's not fun. I can assure you because the thing is quite unreadable. I sympathize with your intention of creating a habit of polemic that is positive and dynamic. How you love the words polemic and dynamic. There are, there are a number of things in your manifesto which are relevant to our situation. Though I can't really say there is anything in it which is truly new. I support in particular your appeal to our artists and our writers that they should be more aware of the rich cultural and philosophical traditions of Asia and their relevance to the perennial needs of man. It is ironical that this Asia-centric business was not go was, was was got going by Westerners, and there is a danger that it will become a mere fad if it hasn't already become one, as it has in the West. I also agree with you that many of our writers and writers are not aware of the implication of the idioms idioms of modernism they use in their works. But this doesn't mean I agree with your call that they should all be as articulate as you are in matters of theory and polemics. I don't see any reason why all painters must be expected to theorize or engage in polemics. If a painter like Latif Mohidin, for example, is content with just painting, he should be left alone to do what he does best. It's good enough that they can articulate on canvas without having to be articulate on the typewriter as well. But if they can, of course we would like them to do so. I appreciate your intention, but I wasn't happy with the tone, the manner, and certain other things about both the manifesto and the exhibition. My little act of protest was a, was a gesture that was clear in motivation but not without ambiguity. <clears throat> a number of factors provoked me to do it. I wouldn't deny the mischievous side of me had a hand in it. The exhibitionist in me, too, no doubt. But believe me, these are not decisive factors. Do you really think I would belachokan maruah, you know, sully myself or prostitute my self-respect just for a joke? you got to be joking, Pia! Among the major things the act set out to do was to test a central premise of, to your manifesto, as well as to protest against what I saw as pretentious, contradictory, and false. I was prepared to do this, although I was quite conscious of the risks I was taking. Among the risks was the likelihood of the act being completely misunderstood seen as an anti-intellectual buffoonery, perhaps even hooli, hooli, hooliganism. I was prepared to take risk in a manner, in the name of common sense and for the sake of genuine intellectuality and true spiritual values. There is an element of bullying in the rhetoric of your manifesto, a juvenile sort of bullying, an embarrassing and embarrassing in its access of self consciousness and solemn protestations. I would, I 
will also decide what being mystical in nature. Who are you trying to compress, Pia, with your capital letters and your exclamation marks? Yourself? Those who have some idea of true mystical insight might just wonder if you know what you are talking about. Today might feel mystical, if not something one or one's art can just decide to be. If the mystical is understood as a direct translogical knowledge or experience of the divine, the transcendent order or scenic, I wonder how you, prisoner of verbalism that you are, can ever be, can ever be there to guide us. Listen to this. Modern art, finding its raison d'etre in a dialectical reconsideration of phenomenal process. Often this sort of rhetorical ammo is repeated, capital letters, exclamation marks bandied around so indiscriminately, almost threateningly. You claim in the foreword that you have undertaken a ferocious reading program. It had to be ferocious, of course. Lasting two whole years specifically for this manifesto. I am impressed and prepared to believe that you know the meaning of the words you use with so much relish. But as I suggested above, a Zen master would most probably be amused by your reason due to your dialectical reconsideration etc etc well pia with you with your zen i with mine in a way it was zen which inspired my zp comment on your dialectical reconsideration of phenomenal processes i can't really say i knew what kind of reaction to expect shock from the majority of those Presently obvious, even arrest for indecent exposure. But against my better knowledge of Malaysians in such situations, I vaguely expected at least one or two people to burst out laughing. No one did. One person, however, did walk up to me and touch my shoulder, which I took to be a gesture <laughs> of solidarity. I must say I was a trifle disappointed by the total absence of even a smile. I don't even know what sort of Zen books you've been reading, but the ones I've read are full of humor, even accounts of practical jokes. These Zen jokes are designed to shock the Zen aspirants into awareness. They also affirm what I've always believed in, that in a philosophy that sees life as a unity, the mundane and the mystical, the sacred and the profane merge. Ordinary categories that separate reality and experience into compartments are ignored. Zen and I, as I understand it, also always alert to signs of falsity, quick to mark anything that forgets reality in the name of reality. I can recall a host of anecdotes from Zen literature that demonstrate this. The story of the Buddha and his flower sermon, you yourself must have come across in your voracious reading program. You must have also read some of the stories that climax with the kick of the master in the monk's backside that produces enlightenment, or with the patriarch tearing a sacred manuscript into shreds and tossing it into the winds. Of the anecdotes, there are vulgar. My favorite is the one that was made the subject of a painting by the 18th century Zen painter, Fugai Mototaka. The story tells of a Zen monk on the very cold day, bringing in an image of the Buddha to warm his backside. When reprimanded by a fellow monk who was shocked by the act of sacrilege, the first monk said, tongue in cheek, that he was burning the image to obtain Sarina, Sarira, an indestructible substance found only in the ashes of cremated saints. He could find no Sarira from the ashes of the image. 
therefore it couldn't have been a saint. And since that day was even colder than he had thought, the monk went on to burn two other images to give himself warmth. So Pia, like the flower sermon of the Buddha, like the cake of the Zen master that produced enlightenment in the earnest seeker, and like the burning of the image of the saint to warm one's, one's bum on a cold, wintry day, my Kurang Aja act as an opening of your exhibition was designed to shock you into enlightenment about some homely truth concerning art and reality. What could be more concrete, more ordinary, and at the same time mystical in the sense of revealing the essence of phenomenal processes, that the processes of, of our own body, such as pissing and shitting, that we do every day, at least I do, I don't know about you. So, from this point of view, my act of spontaneous theater had the aim of testing one of the, of the major premises of a manifesto and exhibition. This, as well as protesting against the false, the pretentious, and the contradictory in it. The atmosphere of the opening was such that it, couldn't have, it could not have induced a state of meditation that you claim to have wanted in order to bring your audience into confrontation with the essential mystical nature of reality. In your manifesto, you go on about the self-effacing role of the artist this may be evident in the objects of the exhibition and consistent with your shrill rejection of the concept of art as expression of the artist's responsibility and the artist's personality. But the nature and tone of your manifesto and the manner and the atmosphere of the exhibition clearly contradicts your claim of a self-effacing role. No, Pia, you are not self-effacing invisible dalang the unseen puppeteer in Malay shadow play. You are a modern artist, like all modern artists, subject to all the usual pressures and needs. It wasn't supposed to be an exhibition. It was supposed to be an experience, a direct confrontation with the mystical reality. But it still had to be legitimized by the presence of a representative of officialdom. And he, of course, had to give one of those usual speeches. What did you say, Pia? A situation conduct conducive to meditation on mystical reality? Were you serious, Pia? The aim of the whole endeavor, however misguided, could only have been saved by something unexpected, by something that proved its essential point. However clouded by confusion and pretension, virtually and the thief of its arrogance. The act of mine was something unexpected. So, Pia, you should have been thankful to me for pissing on your sacred text that morning in Sudapadulis. John Cage, whom you seem to admire, will certainly have appreciated my gesture. Cage, also influenced by Zen, at least had, has got the essential message, that incredible philosophy, and is never solemn. The critic Virgil Thompson, an admirer of Cage, once described Cage, a Cage concert in New York in 1958, as cartoon comedy. One recalls Marcel Duchamp, a one-time Dadaist, saying, humor is a thing of great dignity. Our local guru of the performing arts, theater critic Christian Jit, who is so dazzled by your rhetoric, affirms your proud claim to be together with your collaborator, Sulaiman Isa, Savage Innocence. Sorry, Lapia, innocence you certainly are, but savage? Far from it. Innocence in the way you get so terribly excited like a kid with new toys, over, over newly discovered notions that are, are already dated elsewhere, but far from savage in your understanding and ability to deal with reality with a small R. Actually, Pia, your concept of art seems to me to be ambivalent, if not confused. Your manifesto suggests that you were set up to do in the exhibition was an art, direct confrontation with reality, but also art 
that's words like we are approaching art. If your aim was to bring us into direct confrontation with reality, why confrontation and not simply experience? Say, I, in my simplicity of mind, would like to ask if that is your aim. Why talk about art at all? If you really don't want to have anything to do with art, have the guts to say so. In that case, you, de you needn't have dragged all the so-called found objects into pseudopanulis. It seems you are not that certain you don't want to have anything to do with art. You still want to cling to that word, however supposedly radical your concept of art may be. What exactly is your function, Pia? If I want to experience reality directly, to meditate on the mystical dimension behind ordinary objects and experiences, why shouldn't I do it in my own form? In my own free form, many manifestos, free from boring speeches by cultural bureaucrats. In short, free from piadasas of this world. Why on earth would I buy experience from you? The person buying my work will really be buying an actual experience, not an artifact, says Reza Piadasa. I remember Jasper John saying, what makes something art is it being placed in the context of art. My agreement with John's hanging hangs on that something. Context is important. Tradition is important. The complex of intellectual assumption is important. That's why anti-art only works by reference to art. But not everything that is dragged into the context of art and dragged in custom-made theory can be considered art. I don't agree with Cage, whom you follow so slavishly that art and reality, life are the same. Art is based on reality, perhaps even feeds on reality. But art and reality are not identical. If we truly value reality, life, we cannot possibly confuse the two. But art can deepen and widen our consciousness of a reality that's multidimensional. To perform this functional, this, to perform this function, art needs form. But it needs, but it must be stressed that the concept of form meant here is not static or rigid. The important thing to realize is that art cannot run away from form. The literary and art critic Harold Rosenberg once reminded artists and writers. Formlessness is simply another look, and a temporary one at that. In time, organization shows through the most chaotic surface. Pia, Pia, you want art, but how you confuse you are about what art is. You want reality, but how innocent you are about reality. Reality? Just remember the rainbow arc of my piss, the fountain of life that affirms and celebrates the unity of reality, the vulgar and the refined, the bawdy and spiritual, the profane and the sacred, the zippy gesture of affirmation that what you do well to meditate on. So my dear Pia and uh, Che City Zainun too, when I unzipped my pants at the opening of that historic exhibition, I wasn't prostituting my self-respect. I was just revealing reality. Thank you. Fraternally yours, Saleh.